just the way this is the Cedric Maxwell podcast, and you and I always keep it on the what? A hundred. A hundred. And you talking about <laughs> you know what? No, you say the man got big oh, okay. Let's yeah. go. Keep it on. <laughs> we ain't trying to keep it like this. Ain't no. If you if you're a kid and you're watching this show, tell your mom like, okay, they said the word balls, and they might curse a little bit, but but they keeping it. Damn it, they keep it on a hundred. <laughs> keep it a hundred. Honey. Like that's that's really what it boils down to. Brad Stevens obviously putting this team together, and then seeing these guys execute the way they've been, it, it's it's been incredible. Look across the NBA, you know, some of the top tier teams that were you know projected to have a, a, a deep playoff run. Yeah, it's early in the season, but Golden State Warriors don't look don't look that great, right? They don't look like that team that some people were saying could be running back to the finals. I, and I know it's early. However, I'm just saying. Teams that what have is, made what are your surprise teams. Teams that happen? have made drastic changes, like you, you have to do that in order to stay stay afloat. I feel like the Cedric Maxwell podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. I gotta tell Max, you know, not to get too excited because you know it's still early in the season. Like like you were telling me a couple weeks ago, right, Max? <laughs> Calm down, Joe Sway. This is you're not holding up a putting up a banner or doing anything like this. Uh, they played a couple of teams, and they proved one thing uh, when they won a quality game in Philly and dominated Philadelphia, and that's what out having two of their starters. So that was a really mm. good thing. Uh, you go up and take care of business in Toronto, uh, tough game, but you're still able to win that game, and now you're down here in Memphis, which could be a trap game. Uh, mm. Memphis, a bunch of their players aren't playing. Marcus Smart is out for a month. Uh, John Morant isn't around. Uh, they're they're down three, four, five uh, uh, players. But uh, this is this shows me what kind of team you are. We come in with the resolve to win. The question would be, what game will Al Horford play? Uh, because mm-hmm. you, if you say you don't want him in back to back, you're gonna play him tonight, and then not tomorrow night, or you're gonna play him, not have him play tonight, and then play him tomorrow night. It's, it's one of those things where you look at this team, but uh, yeah, they're they're hitting on all cylinders, playing well. And the thing I love about this team right now, it's the next guy up. Mm-hmm. Like you know, Derek White in the last couple of games has been sensational. Uh, one game in Boston, Derek White had had only three points. So it's always another piece that able to step up, and that's the that's the character, and 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 that's the. Uh, that's the character of a real good team when other guys are able to just not Tatum all the time, just not Brown, right. not Paul Dingus. Right. It's always somebody else. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's been the case for sure the, the first three weeks of the regular season. So, yeah, we'll get into that. Also, uh, talk about what's going on out west with Draymond Green serving his five-game suspension. Uh, that pretty much why? happened like two days why, after, why, why, uh, why, why af- after our last there? episode. Why are we going there if you didn't have your camera on? Just the way you would have been like, just like <laughs> Oh, Every man. Camera, <laughs> what am I? I got I, I to be a 2 places at once now, David Max. You know, everybody asked me that. Everybody was asking me. I got on uh, with uh, Brian Scalabrini the other day on um, uh, NBC, and he was asking me, did, well, well, how do you, you feel about Draymond's five-game suspension? I said, it's a new league now. Uh, you know, mm. he, he, he grabbed a guy. He didn't, he wasn't like choking him, choking him, but he had him around the neck and he's carrying him around. So, you know, by reputation, uh, he's going to be, he's going to get a five game, a five game suspension. Um, is it fair? Well, if you do things enough times and, and your reputation starts to get tainted, the smallest infraction that you have compared to somebody else's infraction is completely different. So, uh, I, do I feel it was fair? Well, in the new NBA, what is fair? In the new NBA, I'd say, yeah, that probably is fair for, for them to suspend him five games. Definitely. Now, All right. What it I'll, 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 I'll give you, I'll give you my take. After it costs him $700,000. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, but at this point, you know that doesn't really bother Draymond, man. He's he's not in. He's not worried about his 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 uh, his, his bank account. I don't feel like. But we'll we'll get back into it later. Uh, 
But first things first, let's talk about the Celtics, right? Five game win streak. Um, the end season tournament, the two and But that Toronto Raptors game, man, talk about a trap game. I feel like that was going to be the one. Uh, you go into that fourth quarter, you you lose the lead, you're in their house. It's not always the uh, easiest place to play. And you had Drake in the front row uh, applying that pressure, who I guess hasn't seen much of the Raptors since uh, since Nick Nurse was, was was the coach because he was confused as to who was coaching the Toronto Raptors. And he also had a funny joke about Peyton Pritchard looking like he was uh, a Bitcoin scammer, which got a lot of people uh, talking about that on social media. I didn't even know Pritchard wasn't even on the floor when he said that. I think that's even that what does funnier, a but. what does a Bitcoin scammer look like? It kind of looks like Pritchard, man. <laughs> yes, the same Pritchard. <laughs> Especially when he's a uh, when he's in his street clothes, he just seems like someone that would just talk up he, talk, he talk a good game about his, about Bitcoin. Dude. He's in his uniform. Well, I, I didn't. I don't know where he got that from, but I guess he, he looks like someone that would approach you and be like, "Hey, man, have you have you considered cryptocurrency yet?" Like he just seems like that guy. Like I, I see it. I see it completely. What Drake was saying. You know, stop, <laughs> stop agreeing with these 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 guys like Drake. Come on, where the hell they get? You know, rappers make up all kind of shit, and and by him was like, "Where they? Where, where did you get that from?" Now, nobody's ever even heard somebody say that's not, and it was so original that it was crazy. I've never heard somebody yeah. say you look like a bit can Bitcoin scammer. That, that just, <laughs> oh, you know, crypto scammer! Yeah, crypto big whatever. What, what, hap- what happened to all that? What, what, what happened to all that energy? All those people that used to be flooding my timeline with the uh, you need to sign up. You guys are missing out. You know, I'm just gonna go ahead and make all this money, and and you can uh, you know, kick yourself later. Like, yeah, what happened? What happened to all that energy? I, I don't. There know. was there was the energy that happened during the the '80s, as same way. Oh yeah, what and, was it? it? At that time, it was called Amway. Amway people would come to your house with a big board and start drawing these circles, and this is you, and this is what you can make, and if you sell. <laughs> And you're on the top, and then these guys on the bottom, and then they have to give you money every time. So every like a pyramid scheme or every, something like that? every blue moon, there's going to be something which is going to be, you know, sensationalized about making money. I didn't know anything about Bitcoin. You say you can make a coin, and the United States government doesn't make it, but you can make it, and it's worth something. How the hell does that happen? Yeah. So I, I, never, I, never got, I never got a chance to understand it. Yeah, neither. And, and apparently uh, I w- it was way out of my uh, my tax bracket, I guess, because people were talking about an actual Bitcoin, you know, with the, the value of it would, 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 would equivalent to... Ooh, they were talking co- about... Co- close to putting a, a down payment on a house, like something like that. Yeah, like, my daughter was telling me, because her, her boyfriend at the time was involved in the same kind of energy. She said... Uh, and they're going to go out and they're going to have Bitcoin farms where they're going to raise, you know, these Bitcoins. And they're going to, yeah. like they were growing, like they were growing uh, freaking uh, uh, vegetables or something. I'm like, what yeah. the hell is going on here? So I think maybe that that part is is gone. And and I think yeah. the guy who was in that currency, and, I, and I'm, I'm mistaken, but there was a guy who something was in that currency is going to jail right now for maybe the rest of his life or scamming you know millions and millions and millions and millions of people uh with yeah. the whole bitcoin thing so so yeah so that's what Pritchard looked like yeah that's what he looked like he looked like one of those dudes but anyways <laughs> that was a that was a quality win for the Celtics team I mean Jason Tatum didn't shoot particularly well but Chris Porzingis made a difference when it mattered most and you know those are the type of wins I I I want the Celtics to face, right? Or I want yes. them to, to conquer yes. because you don't want this thing to be so easy in, in you know three weeks to the regular season. You want to see you want to see them face adversity, and they're getting a little bit of that here and there uh, throughout these uh, throughout this five game winning streak. For them to struggle the way they did in that game, and then to in the second quarter just have a second quarter was unreal. Defensively, mm-hmm. offensively, locking shots, running the floor, going up by eighteen in the game. And then right. come out in the third quarter, and I talked to Derek, Derek White after the game. He said, essentially what we did, we took our foot off the gas. And you can't do that with any kind of opponent. And um, they made up an 18-point lead and, and took the lead themselves, the Raptors. And uh, it was a dogfight from then on, but the Celtics had enough resolve at the end to uh, win the game. Uh, he said Derek White was really good. Tatum didn't shoot it well. 
Brown was okay. Porzingis was in foul trouble. And I tell you who played, I thought pretty good. It was the Bitcoin guy. Uh, hey, Richard. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> he controlled, he, for the, the time he was in the game, as him and Sam Hauser, they controlled the initial point of attack. Mm. They put, he defended the ball well, and Sam Hauser shot the ball well. And that's how they got that huge lead. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I agree with that. I don't think Pritchard, you know, throughout this, uh, that that sluggish stretch of games where he couldn't find his shot, I, I think, I don't think he, he's the kind of guy who's going to be concerned about that, right? He's always, he's got the confidence that the next game's going to be better. And, and what you're seeing from him on the defensive end, and as a playmaker, I, I think that's what you want to see continue to grow, continue to evolve. So, and especially on the road, his road numbers compared, I mean, Gary went through them. You know, he spent like five minutes on him last last episode <laughs> with the splits, but it clearly there's a, there's a contrast, right? We found out uh, Gary, throughout, Gary killed throughout the Gary, throughout Gary this season. Killed him. Gary killed him. <laughs> Gary, Gary had the stat. Gary had the uh, the receipts, he, the data. He had three. He went three games, three games on the road. He didn't score at all. Oh, for so, eleven. Yeah. So now it's a good sign that you know he gets out on the road and knocks down a couple of shots and gets his confidence going and. But this team is a really good team. And what's going to slow them down? Knock on wood here would be entry. Uh, I think that their bench is starting to prove a little bit more with Percet, uh, um, bringing Hauser. Yeah. Uh, you have, you, you're playing uh, Pritchard in there. And you got some other weapons over there that you could possibly use uh, that will come in and maybe, you know, help you get some things done. So, so I like what they have. A lot of people right now saying, give me one more proven veteran. Still? Wow. I like this team the way it is, man. You talk about the top six, you know, guys like Hauser, Pritchard. You, maybe you need one guy to sort of solidify a role, but that's that's a, that's a squad, man. You know, well, you, I, you I, go, I like them. You go, don't you go in the locker room from time to time? Do you ever go in I there? do. And, I and do, the yeah. Thing that, the thing that Abby Chin made a reference to the reporter for NBC, and she said their locker room doesn't have any juice. He said that's what Blake Griffin gave them. He mm. gave them that 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 added element of, of fun, uh, a relaxation. He said, and yeah. that might that might be somebody you might even bring back. So I, I you know I don't I don't know enough about I would I wouldn't people. hate that. But but you're but you're in you're in the locker room with them. Do they have any juice? Yeah, I mean it's not the same type of uh, lighthearted, a lot more laughing as opposed to last year. But I, I kind of like that. However, I, I wouldn't mind seeing someone like Blake Griffin come back because of who he was last year. And let's face it, the the, the front court's still a little thin. I mean, you got Cornette in the mix. You got guys who have uh, who, who, mm -hmm. who've answered when their name was called. But what I you're mean, talking about you. You're talking about Blake condor. had that muscle, but you're talking about the condor guy. That's what I. That's, that's what right. I, that's that's what right. I, you know what? Speaking of uh, <laughs> something, you know, talking about the, the vibe in the locker room, I actually caught up with Cornette uh, down in Philly. Uh, I spent about six, seven minutes with him, man. I wish I brought that up. You know what? Next time I see him, I'm going to tell him. I, guess, I want to see what he thinks about this nickname because you're the only one calling him that. But let's see if we can make it a thing. We can we can make this thing go. Yeah, I called him that on, on the air. I said the condor flying in, man. And he. So, yeah, I would love to see Blake back in the mix. He, he, He's a he's a quality guy for them, especially if you play bigs. I mean, he runs the floor, he plays his role. You know, he doesn't try to do anything that he's not used to doing. And he's a guy who can actually, from time to time, if you want to, knock down the three. Yeah. So sure. the thing that you see the sub it's so dangerous. Too many three point shooters. Sometimes I think they overuse the three point shot. I'm going to be out uh -oh. there like Garrett. Uh -oh. like Garrett don't, tell, don't tell Joe. Don't tell Joey that. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money bet. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com Boston and kick off the NFL season. 
FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And this is me talking to Sam Cassell. Sam Cassell said to Jason Tatum, when your three isn't going, he said, use your size. You got guys who are 6'5". Uh, Hart was guarding you in Philadelphia. He's six. Mm-hmm. He's six five. You're six nine. Utilize some of the paint area. So I think that it would help them from time to time to mix it up and put a little post game in there because you'll get a higher percentage shot. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I mean, Jason it, it, Denham was he was one for eleven the other day. Yeah. And you still and and that's the thing you still win the game and Jason Tatum is one for eleven from the three point line. Yeah, it's impressive, especially when you look at a couple of these wins where he sort of got things going in that second half, but it wasn't like he had to carry this team. The team already had to sort of put the had the win in place, so to speak, and he just closes. He's been closing it out, right? That's sort of been the the mo for a lot of these wins, but. Yeah, I mean, I got, got a question. shot selection shot selection is always going to be a, a a talking point, even though as much as Joe Mazzula can't stand it. <laughs> I got I got a question though. Why do you have Why do you have Biggie behind your head? I mean, you got oh, three. You got it's a great book. This, and all of a sudden, you come up with Biggie. Yeah, I see a big <laughs> three. I see the last. I said, see this, <laughs> see that, and then all of a sudden, I see Biggie. Like, I just came back from Brooklyn not too long ago, man. I don't know. I got to put put big back there. I guess so, man. I mean, why (laughs) don't you use your guy, though? You always use your guy with big, big poppy. How about him? Why wouldn't you have him? I don't. I don't. I don't have a a, a Ortiz book. I I don't have an Ortiz book. I can't say. I say. I can't say big poppy. I just say Ortiz (laughs) because, you know. I I don't have this book. Everybody else in New England calls him Big Poppy, except you, Joe Sway, <laughs> the, the Dominican, the, the, the Honduranians, you know. I adore it. I used to say Bolivian. I, I used to think you were doing that on purpose just to just to get me pissed off. Honduranians, man, Honduranians. <laughs> I feel but, like but, both, but, 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 the, both a, our it, pronunciations it, work, I guess. It is a good, it's a good sign so far for the Celtics. Can they take care of these two games and then go to what people have been saying is going to be the biggest game of the season? Doesn't look like it's going to be the biggest game of the season when you play Milwaukee at home. Got a lot to, a lot riding on that game Wednesday or is it Tuesday, Wednesday? Wednesday night. Uh, Wednesday night, you got a lot riding on that game. Uh, so take care of business for these two games. And now let's see how you measure up. Yeah, because it's gonna be fun to see what Drew is gonna be like going up. Oh, you know, he he is Dame Lillard and Drew. Drew is probably chomping at the bit right now to get it's it. It's gonna Dame be Lillard great. That telling you know Milwaukee you chose them poorly. The thing to Milwaukee, you look at it though, Milwaukee's defense is really going down. Uh, and Dame is the, no fault of Dame, but Dame isn't a, a defender anyway. Not that that name, right. Right. but. Um, they had their calling card was was their defense. Now they feel like they're going to outscore you. They could be in some. They could have some serious problems. No, no question. Especially when you look at the way they've been playing, the struggles they faced, and you're you're, you're going up against the the best defending backcourt in the NBA, man. David, I said it. And I may I may not. It's not really the hot take at this point because between Derek White and Drew Holiday, like the the support that this this starting five has 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 received from these two on both ends of the floor, man, it's immeasurable. I mean, look at what uh, that win in Philadelphia for, for Derek White to go off the way he did when they needed him, right? And what, he, I, what I he's love, doing, I love the, what yeah, they're I doing to it. opposing backcourts, man, it's, just, it's, it's suffocating, really. They've been suffocating opposing backcourts. Yeah, I love what they're doing right now with, uh, I, I love the nickname, the Stock Exchange. I, I love the fact that you're talking about those guys. Yo, is that, hold on, hold on, Max. Is that a nickname or are you doing the same thing again? Like, is that your no, nickname? No, no, or I, people... I read, no, I read that. I the read that. Stock Exchange. The Stock Exchange. They were both in suits. It was actually on uh, my Instagram uh, about the Stock Exchange. Okay, and check like, you out. If, All right, Max. If you, if you play against these guys right now, your stock is going down. Because, okay. You know, they're, they're so, they're, they're, they're such, Two dynamic defenders, and uh, you know I've always felt about Marcus Smart, but man, I think their defense, those two guys together combined, you know, rival 
uh, what the Celtics did when they were defending at such a high level uh, from the initial point of attack. Yeah, man. I mean, you the 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 trade that Drew Holiday trade was obviously about bringing in someone like Holiday who can lock the opposing backcourts and all that. But it also, it, it accentuates Derek White and, and who he's been for this team. And, and I think that's exactly what Brad Stevens had in mind. And I'd be hard pressed to find someone that that would today say that that was a a bad deal, right? When you look at well, you everything know, those, that's unfolded. No, 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 just wait. Those. Those two draft picks that the, the two first round picks you gave up for them. You, you never know you who they're going to be, right, you Max? Don't want those yeah. back? You don't want those back? No, really? no, no, Max. You know why? Because the, that that player that, that's going to be uh, that 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 they're going to use that pick for, he's in middle school right now. So I'm good, man. I'm good. I I, I like the I like the Celtics' chances, or maybe not middle school. Maybe he's a sophomore in high school. But yeah, anyway, no matter how you slice it, it is down the road, man. That is. That's way down there, man. I'm, I'm good. I, I'm, I want to see this team win today, now, right I now. Get, I, I, Put your I, chips I, on the table. I get you. I had a chance to talk to uh, Porzingis uh, on the elevator, introduce myself, and I said, Oh, that's the happiest Celtics player, I think, I, right, there, right I, now. He said, I said, you are so happy. He said, man, he <laughs> said, you can't get the smile off my face. He said, I am so happy that Brad decided to make the trade. And, wow, uh, he said that. I'm saying what he, his role with this team, right now, in these first 12 games, is perfect. He he fits in like a glove. The fact yep. that he can score in the paint, he's been big enough to block shots at the at the end of, of plays, and he gives them another weapon on the outside. That no offense at all to. Uh, people who love Rob Williams, but this is a completely different player. Rob Williams was a, a, a great defender, could block shots, but his scoring was essentially lob plays around the rim. He wasn't making plays, putting the ball on the floor, or making those passes. Yeah. So uh, this is this this fits what they want to do a lot more than Rob would have, even if Rob was healthy. No, no, no question for sure. And, and, and Brad Stevens, knowing what this team needed and, and having the uh, you know what to to pull the trigger on on the what's couple it, of trades. What's the you know what? What's the you know what? The cojones. There you go. Why didn't you just say it? Big ball, <laughs> big ball Brad. That's what you say. <laughs> because you know what I you knew what I meant when I said it. That's why. Yeah, Look, I did. How many GMs? How many GMs would make a move like that? You well, know, when, and, 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 and not. Without having someone like Tatum or Brown, you know, dropping hints or, or quotes yeah. saying like, "Hey, you know, if I could go somewhere else, I'll go somewhere else to win." Like that's what happened with Milwaukee. Milwaukee only made a big move because yeah. Giannis said something in the podcast. Like, well, you know? here's here's the thing I feel about that is that just the way this is the Cedric Maxwell podcast, and you and I always keep it on the what a hundred, a hundred, and you talking about <laughs> you know what. No, you say the man got big balls. Oh, okay. Let's yeah. go. Keep it on. <laughs> we ain't trying to keep it like this. Ain't no. If you if you're a kid and you're watching this show, tell your mom like, okay, they said the word balls and they might curse a little bit, but, but they keeping it. Damn it, they keeping it on the honey. <laughs> keep like, it on honey. Honey. Like that's that's really what it boils down to. Brad Stevens obviously putting this team together and then seeing these guys execute the way they've been. It's it's been incredible. Look across the NBA, you know, some of the top tier teams that were, you know, projected to have a, a, a deep playoff run. Yeah, it's early in the season, but Golden State Warriors don't look don't look that great, right? They don't look like that team that some people were saying could be running back to the finals. I, and I know it's early. However, I'm just saying teams that what have is, made what are change, your surprise teams? Teams that happen? have made drastic changes, like you, you you have to do that in order to stay stay afloat, I feel like. There is no I in team, but there is one in Indeed. And that's the hiring platform you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed is a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. We streamline hiring with powerful tools that can find you match candidates. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed match their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed Data US. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy because you're able it's able to focus 
on the kind of candidates that you're looking for. Wean out the ones that you don't need and zero in on the ones that can really make a difference that are worth hiring. Candidates who invite to apply are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who see it in search. According to US data, we get you one step closer to the hire by immediately matching you with quality candidates. Indeed does the hard work for you. Indeed shows you candidates whose resume on Indeed fit your job description immediately after you post. So you can hire faster. Indeed's hiring platform matches you with quality candidates instantly. Even better, Indeed's the only job site where you can pay for applications that meet your must-have requirements. Indeed is an unbelievably powerful hiring platform, delivering four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to TalentNest in 2019. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with a $75 job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash maxwell offer good for a limited time that's right you can claim your 70 dollars credit now at indeed.com slash maxwell that's indeed.com slash maxwell terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed and it's others did that you know yeah but teams that have surprised you this year and came out the box now they might flounder here later on but minnesota coming out the box yep. have been really have been really good Golden Houston. State War. Golden State hasn't been. Houston's been good. Um, another team that is, you know, opening eyes to me. And who they went in and slapped the Lakers was Sacramento. Sacramento <laughs> they went in played. and slapped the Lakers. Sacramento <laughs> plays did. at a pace that the older team hates. Yeah. Older yeah. teams hate when you run like that on every play and you're trying to get yeah. them a shot and whatever. It's like they don't Darren Fox just they came don't back to let the older team get a chance to breathe, and that's right. what I saw that game. That showed me boy, if they get into that with Sacramento, boy, the Lakers would be in a lot of trouble in the playoffs. Yeah, no, 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 no question. And 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 then you look at it, you know the Golden State Warriors and what's going on there, man. And it's like like that whole approach of I'm gonna just bully you and I'm gonna get inside your head, like. That only can go so far, right, Max? You got to actually execute and play the game. And I feel like they met the, they've met their match against the Minnesota Timberwolves, right? Especially on the back to back, or what was that? I think it's a, a, a game in between. But there was there's no love lost between those two. And it, it literally took the first minute of that second game for something to pop off the way it did. And then, of course, it has something to do with Draymond. Now, look, Max, if you see one of your teammates, right, and someone is pushing towards their upper air that neck area your natural instinct is to, is to respond but didn't Draymond take a little too far man to, to drag someone from their neck across the court all the way to the other side like like Cobain sitting there like yo you got me bro uncle man I'm, I'm tapping out I'm done like he still he still wouldn't let him go man like it's getting ridiculous man this shit like come on man you know, Draymond I, and his antics I, I've had it I, I'm done I'm done with it let me give you the perfect analogy here. <laughs> knocked over the book you, okay your book goes down but let me give you the perfect <laughs> analogy here this is the perfect analogy Perfect analogy for you would be when uh, uh, Joel, your brother, used to choke you out like that. You'd be like, "Yo, okay, I mean, I'm done here." Yeah, then he would let go. He know he would know he would know that the fight is over. I'm done. I'm in a I'm in a spot where I can't do I can't defend myself anymore, man. Right? Like, yeah, but I mean, I understand what you're saying. Uh, but this is a grown ass man we're talking about, man. Yeah, but I even heard Perk say Perk said that they should. Uh, Trade uh, Clay Thompson right now, and and, oh, and that ship is sailed, well, this, Max. This like is this what, is what I'm talking about. You you want to keep this big dynasty or big three, four, whatever it is, intact? Okay, you got a championship out of it. Uh, that fourth one, man, that was impressive. But it's time to break up the band. It's too late now. You know, it's like you waited too long for to trade Larry and Mikhail, and it's already 1993. You know what I mean? Like I just don't. I don't wasn't, think the Golden State that, Warriors have a lot of options here. Wasn't that the same thing you could have said about the Celtics when they had Kevin Garnett at the end and Paul Pierce? Could you have said the same thing about that team? Absolutely. And I was upset uh, got, when the trade happened. The two. I was upset when the trade happened, but looking back on it, Danny did the right thing. I don't I I, I think most of the fans would agree with that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And it takes the it takes cojones to do that too, <laughs> to break up that that band. And and I'm not saying the the Warriors should have gone ahead and, and traded Steph, but with between Draymond, between Clay, I mean, 
again, looking back a couple of years ago, it would have been a, the, the, the worst idea in the world, or at least, yeah. you know, last last off season. Well, they got what they got, and we'll see where see how it goes. But you still have Clay Thompson, who could be a dangerous shooter. Still have, you know, Steph is Steph has been hurt. Draymond, they think, and Looney hasn't done what, but they they talked about some of the other guys that uh, uh, Aminga uh, being that guy. He oh yeah, more, and he was going to be this next impact player, and it really hasn't that. That thing over there down the, down the road in Sacramento is going to give a lot of those teams problems because of yeah, their ability to <clears throat> run up and down the floor with De'Aaron Fox and all those young Keegan and all those other guys running up and down the floor. A, lot of, problems, a lot of problems for any of those teams. Out there because they don't yeah. No, like you said, man, for, for – uh... Uh, aging team like the Warriors, they don't they don't want to be running like that. They don't want that kind of smoke against the Sacramento Kings, and, and they'll they'll you know they can slow things down too as well. If you, if you want to do the half court set, man, they got guys that can do that between uh, Fox look, and, and Sabonis. That, look, that look on your face a minute ago when that alarm went off was like <laughs> like it was coming. <laughs> I thought they were pulling up to my place. It was a fire. It was a fire truck. I thought they were pulling up to my apartment. I'm like, oh no. Man, what happened? Uh, like you they're, like they're pulling up on you like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> like they were going to kick the door in. I had a buddy. <laughs> I had a buddy. Like, what's going that on? Actually, that actually happened to him. He said he was sitting there watching TV. And he said his wife and I guess his wife and daughter, they came home. They didn't know he was home. And uh, they had gone upstairs and they heard the TV downstairs and all this stuff. He's downstairs watching the football game in his drawers and drinking some, you know, <laughs> drinking the soda. All of a sudden, the door gets kicked in. The police just break in the damn door and, like, oh, and then put your hands up. He was like, what? They, they <laughs> thought he was robbing. They thought he was robbing the place. I was like, oh, hell. And you had that same look like, well, what's going on here? But that was so <laughs> funny for him. That's mad funny. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, no, you know the first terrible. thing you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna comply and, and then start asking questions like, yeah, what do you what what why are you in my place? What's going on? What, what who he's like? Who the hell the police has? Who the hell are you? He said, I live here. Hey, like, show me some proof. But you know he's saying all that like this the whole time. He's yeah, like, yeah, I got my drawers and he's, on. And he's on his own couch. Imagine. <laughs> Oh, that's oh hilarious. my god! I'm just we picturing gone, them. Like, we've gone off, we, we've gone yeah. off the rail, people. We've gone. That's off a wrap. The- that's a wrap. All right, let's go do it for this episode of the Cedric Maxwell podcast. Uh, powered by FanDuel. Head to FanDuel.com/slash/Boston and win big. Collect some of the bonus bets. Uh, put money down the spread, props, prop bets, all that good stuff. You can find yes, it over at FanDuel.com. That's FanDuel.com/slash/Boston. Uh, he's Cedric Maxwell. I'm Josue Pavone. We'll be back with another episode next week. Stay tuned. We also have a couple of guests lined up that we'll talk about later on at some point. But uh, yeah, man, some fun episodes coming up. So stay tuned. Subscribe, rate, review if you haven't already. Central Maxwell Podcast. He is Central Maxwell. I am Joe Sway Pavone, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. FanDuel is the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. With any winning $5 money line bet, FanDuel, official partner of the NFL.